All right, guys, welcome to BP the Bible Perspective. And as you can see, I have a question. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Uh, why do, or let me, let, me, let me go back up. BLM, why do those three letters divide so? Think about that. Why do those three letters divide? So now I'm looking at a story. Um, Uh, Burlington it's not too far from Kenosha uh, where that shooting take place and that was uh, sparked off uh, again some other racial unrest now uh, Burlington is a town of about 11,000 people 89 percent white it is also uh, probably heavily um, Republican and so, since it is heavily Republican, uh, they pretty much overwhelmingly go for Trump. Okay? All right. So, um, why isn't uh, my thing here going? All right. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, here's the problem with, let's see here. Uh, by the way, Jacob Blake out the case back in August. Um, and he was shot, uh, it's controversy when you're talking about these kinds of shootings and stuff. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about the Jacob Blake case, but that's, again, the atmosphere. Okay. Uh, so the teacher, Melissa Stats, decided <coughs> she was going to talk about racial issues. Um, so she's. I'm going to skim through some of this article here. And uh, so she uh, she thought that um, the incidents of the recent win uh, racial incidents, especially since it hit so close to home, okay, since it hit so close to home and uh, um, uh, since it had, um, I guess, affected the area thought she would teach her kids about systematic racism so she she did that by using a children's book an educational video and a worksheet and then a discussion uh, that led why were people protest protesting what is the black lives matter movement or I'm like what is the black ladder black lives matter movement trying to do and how do we stop systematic racism? Well, predictably, you could, um, and I've kind of been in situations, I've been in all white school, predominantly white schools, the black kids are going to react one way. <laughs> Although the article doesn't necessarily say how the white kids um, reacted. Parents reacted, okay? And that is the thing right there. Parents reacted, and they, uh, they, uh, really, really reacted. Uh, they freaked out and they really pitched a fit. All right. <laughs> okay. So, um, um, I want this is what I want to talk about my thoughts here, just for a few moments. Why do Black Lives Matter (BLM) why do those three letters divide so? And if you kind of go back now, the, and I'm going to say, I, I, as a Christian, I look at Black Lives Matter, and I know other Christians, and this is a recent kind of uncovering where they 
uh, targeted some Christian white people have targeted Black Lives Matter. Not only Christian whites, but conservative. Let me just say white conservative targeted people. And they have said uh, that um, um, they have said, uh, well, put like this, they, they went into the website of the Black Lives Matter. And so basically, here's the, the kind of accusation. First and foremost, Black Lives Matter is started by three black women, um, lesbians, and so they're, they're, and here's my point, their view of life then is going to come from a lesbian point of view. Now other Christians have since come out and said, as Christians, we shouldn't support Black Lives Matter. That's a hip, hypocritical stance. And the reason why is because if you support Republicans and all that they do, the evil and the sin, the lies and everything that they do. But let me kind of back up because first and foremost, Black Lives Matter, there's, let me just say this, there's Black Lives Matter, the slogan, and then there's Black Lives Matter, the movement, and then there's Black Lives Matter, the organization. And just like you're willing to say about Trump, we didn't elect a pastor, you know, that hypocritical stain that you want to talk about, that we didn't elect a pastor. We matter, and now when it comes to Trump, you don't want to. You don't want to. Um. 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 um consider those to be pertinent to Trump, okay, which is hypocritical. Now, the idea also is, all right, the idea is, um, and by the way, uh, whoever B is, uh, I'm not going to kind of respond if you don't give your name. Uh, I'm getting some comments. They say, well, Black Lives Matter is a domestic terror organization. Prove it. And they say 20 killed. By who? Who killed them? See, this, and by the way, like I say, Right here is why you see, just like I'm getting the comments here that Black Lives Matter is a domestic terrorist, one million in damage, 20 killed. Um, which, of course, as you if you follow the news and if you're honest, um, this person who's uh commenting to me don't want to be honest. Those things are not tied to Black Lives Matter, the slogan, movement, or organization. And you have to remember the slogan started, which sparked the movement, which formed the organization. Started back under with Trayvon Martin, but they saw a grown man targeted a teenager because he thought, he said, that person doesn't belong there, Trayvon Martin, which he was staying with his father going to the store, buying some skeleticals. That led to his death by this man. The police didn't want to arrest, I mean, they didn't want to arrest their fellow officers. The DA didn't want to charge. That led to the movement. Now, Black Lives Matter, as an organization, has always had problems. They have always had liberal problems. And when you go into their organization, um, first and foremost, you would go, okay, as a conservative, no, you wouldn't support their kind of, uh, uh, you wouldn't support their agenda. Uh, again, as I said, they're, one, they're not a Christian organization. They are an ultra-liberal. Uh, and so they push for that ideology, which we wouldn't support. However, the organization is not the same as the slogan and then the movement. The recent ignition, now by the way, during this time, what was it, eight years ago when Trayvon Martin incident happened, they came up with the phrase, Black Lives Matter. And I'm gonna say to this person who just commented on me, B, is that Black Lives Matter or Black Lives Don't Matter. Black Lives as a matter of history didn't matter. This is why it was so easy to enslave black lives. 
And then after the Civil War, it was so easy to disregard uh, uh, black lives in the form of Jim Crow. And that's why in each case, whether it's slavery and Jim Crow, there was a hard fought battle. See, to end black lives, there was a hard fought battle. And that goes to the point. Why do the when you say BM, BLM, Black Lives Matter, it's because to some, black lives never matter. And what is always interesting is that, see, what is going on is since uh, the summer, uh, well, going back to, when did George Floyd get, whenever George, uh, George Floyd happened, that reignited when the people saw a police officer put his knee on the neck of a man for eight minutes, literally choking him to death. See, his life didn't matter. But what was interesting about that, it sparked a worldwide, you can say the reignition of Black Lives Matter, the slogan, which led to Black Lives Matter, the movement. And let me also say this, Black Lives Matter, the organization is not a government. They're not trying to be in the government. They do have some of their demands, right? They have some of their demands. And some of their demands are silly or preposterous. But that's not what Black Lives Matter, in a sense, is about. The, the, the organization plays such a little, very small portion, a part in, if any, the slogan in the movement. So the question is, why does Black Lives Matter, as this person comment, and I welcome his comments, but as... Why do those letters, why did the phrase Black Lives Matter incite him, incite those? And what happens with this teacher, okay? matter does it will bring out see the inner hatred it will bring out bring out these feelings that people have racial issues that never never was healed never was dealt with the root deep rooted racist issues that has never been dealt with in this nation laws changed for the good but hearts didn't. And now we see that it started with Obama, flourished in Trump. R right supremacist groups up 800%, according to the uh, Center of uh, uh, the FBI stats, by the way, and the Center of Law, uh, Center of Law and Poverty. Um, why? And by the way, these white supremacy groups, these are 20 year olds, 30. They're not 80 years old. They reach back to Jim Crow days. So generationally, these racist attitudes are being passed down from generation to generation. Now, there's a couple of things that need to happen to change this. One, people need to come to Christ. And I'm going to say, and or, and I hate to even say this, that the greatest, the more immediate thing would be laws need to be changed. Uh, because there are some people that will not change. And that's what the laws are for. Uh, and so until you, and like even with this school right here, these schools, by the way, the school that's up in, uh, again, Burlington, Wisconsin, they're not changing per se. They're not changing. I mean, they're not changing. They're not committing criminals. I mean, they're not committing crime. But look at the uproar here. As long as we have the laws, I can live with people's racism. All right, guys, that is my perspective. Please like and share this video and subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. All right, guys, till next time, I'll see you then.